So data classification, let's dive right in and talk about this. The main function that we're going to focus on is the function that's called extract semantic categories. And so what this does is this is part of the classification as Snowflake is really moving things forward with uh, sensitive data and being able to manage and handle sensitive data with row access policies and, and uh, dynamic data masking with the masking policies, with the tagging. And there's some really cool things that are that are coming up there also, which we'll be getting into in the next few months. Uh, but one of the things is is we also want to be able to classify our data, and and we've talked about this uh, in the past couple of months of of how do we classify the data. And so Snowflake has added this new function that allows us to kind of automatically look at this and try and classify some of this um, some of the data that we've got inside of Snowflake. So top right hand or left hand box up here. A couple of things. Um, so first of all, when we run this function, it's going to return a JSON uh, uh, structure um, that will give us a set of categories, privacy and semantic, for each supported column. And we'll talk about that more in a little bit of detail. Uh, one of the important things to know or understand is that the way that this is working is the, the way the categories are being der derived. It's actually using the metadata and the contains data. So it's looking at column names, but it's also going in and look at the actual data inside of those columns to try and figure out, do we have some, some sensitive data in, in some of these columns? Um, and then the categories are assigned that are assigned. They align with the predefined Snowflake privacy and semantic uh, tags. And so if we come over here to, in the middle here, you'll notice that they're there are actually two tags that, that Snowflake has, has defined. These are predefined tags. One is called privacy category, and one is called semantic category. And so basically these are two levels of classification that the uh, extract semantic categories is going to use. So the privacy category, we, ba we have three values right now. We have the value of identifier, we have quasi-identifier and sensitive. And basically what these are, if you look at the identifier um, inside of the privacy category of identifier, we have a level down, a little bit more detail. And you can see the, the different items that we've got in here, email, um, you know, IP address, name, the, the, your credit card number, some of these types of things. So these are really like the hypersensitive, the highly sensitive items, things that um, you could use just if you've got this value, you you know who this person is, right? Well, if we've got somebody's social security number, that's all we need. And so these are these are flagged as identifiers. And then when we look at the semantic category, it's going to try and actually classify as to which type of identifier that is. When we go to the quasi identifiers, these are maybe not quite so sensitive. Um, they are. You know, but if we had the more of these that we have, the closer we can get to the person. So if we just had a person's age, uh, you know, that's that's probably not that big of a deal. But if we've got their age and their gender and, you know, as we get more and more of these things, we can come closer. And so what Snowflake is doing is they're really aligning these with statutory requirements so uh, so that we can use these in, in conjunction with those types of things. And then right now we've got sensitive which the only thing we've got in there is salary. So you can expect that there are going to be more uh, values for the semantic category tag as, as we go ahead and, and move forward. And the Snowflake uh, brings more and more into this. Hey folks, thanks for checking out this cut from our broadcast. To see the full show, click on the link in the video description. Also check out our learning center, which has white papers, events, live streams, and short explainer videos on a wide range of data management topics. And of course, if you like our content, please share it on LinkedIn. That really means a lot to us. Thanks again for checking us out and we hope to see you in our next broadcast.